This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You need a website or domain, and fast. The USS Constitution, aka Old Ironsides, is one of the most famous ships in history. Aboard that ship, 120,000 pounds of non-psychoactive cannabis rope. When Betsy Ross first sewed the American flag, she held in her hands non-psychoactive cannabis canvas. The word canvas comes from the word cannabis, aka hemp. Porsche, one of the best car makers in the world, made a car out of hemp. The CEO of Hemp Earth flies around in a plane made of hemp. Hemp has been called the miracle fiber, the plant that will save the world. But it won't. The Porsche was only partially made out of hemp and couldn't be in the rain, and the CEO of Hemp Earth hasn't finished building the hemp plane in over eight years and can't raise the funds to finish it, and now is talking about building a hemp spaceship. So, why is Patagonia investing so heavily in hemp? So after doing some reading online, it turns out the topic of hemp is a very sticky, icky topic, and I just want to let you know that I'm trying to separate hemp from that other plant that is also hemp. I'm trying to look at hemp from an incredibly nerdy lens in terms of is it actually important to the world? Does it matter at all? And then that should be fine. You also may have noticed that besides the shoes that I'm wearing, which are from the company that makes the very famous anti-poaching boots, Jim Green, and this Bradley Mountain backpack, that I am covered in 100% hemp, all Patagonia hemp. And I am listing these on my carrot link, so you can just click on the pictures and see what you like. But I'm also changing what I do on carrot. I'm making a weekly collection of 10 things I'm looking at. Swedish military things are on my radar right now, so be sure to check that out. And yeah, that should be, uh, that should be fun. The first thing you need to know before we can actually even get into the discussion is that hemp is never put up against anything correctly. Everything is miscategorized with hemp. Hemp fiber and clothes should not be compared to cotton. Hempcrete should not be compared to concrete. Everything is messed up because that's not essentially what hemp is. So let's talk about cotton and then I'll tell you why everything is messed up. There are many fascinating reasons as to why cotton is the most popular textile on earth. Everything is made out of cotton. The big thing is that cotton is the perfect blend of everything. It's strong enough, it's soft enough, it can be made into really tough workwear like duck canvas or jeans or twills and stuff like that, or it can be made into something very, very delicate like cotton gauze. So it can basically do everything. There's also a ton of other reasons why cotton got so popular. It was the first fiber and then fabric to kind of get industrialized. It was a huge export for the US and Britain. There was nothing holding cotton back and there wasn't anything holding hemp back for a very long time. It was actually required in the US that every farmer grow some hemp in certain areas. And then all of a sudden, obviously people were like, maybe uh, this plant does something else. But that's not the whole story because hemp, I don't really think would have ever been every single shirt that people are wearing and every single sock and every single pant. Cotton is made from seed hairs. That explains it. When hemp is a bast fiber, hemp is actually not really that closely related to cotton, but it's related to things like jute, linen, nettle, sisal, all of those things that don't sound that appetizing. And to put it in a different way, hemp is more related to a burlap sack than cotton is related to hemp. Being a bass fiber, that has some incredible benefits, but it also has some major drawbacks. But you may be thinking, well, people wear linen a lot. Why don't they wear hemp a lot? It's because of those incredible things that also give it a drawback. I hope that made sense because we're just gonna keep on keeping on. Listen, YouTube, I'm not your mother. And to be honest, a lot of people don't think I'd even be a good mother. But as your mother, I think it's time you check out Squarespace and follow your passion and start that business or write that blog. Squarespace has a new fluid engine that makes it easier than ever to build a website. You can drag and drop anything on the site anywhere that you want. And if you're trying to drive traffic to your site organically, obviously you need a blog and don't worry because Squarespace has you covered with that too. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to write blogs, to schedule them in the future, to get organic traffic onto your site to either promote your business or your passion project. Either one's fine for mommy. And the best part is, 
is once your website, blog, or whatever starts taking off and you want to make a little green off of it, Squarespace can grow with you and all you need to do is get the Squarespace point of sale app and before you know it, you can be selling things in real life in no time. The time is now. There's no more time to waste. Just start right now. You can try a trial out on Squarespace and if you love it, you can go to squarespace.com slash the iron snail to save 10% off your first order of a website or domain. So if you're like me and you read all these things that said, Hemp is one of the strongest natural fibers in the world. You were probably thinking, well, what the heck is the strongest natural fiber in the world? I want that one. You can't have that one. Neither can I because it's spider silk. So no one really officially says that hemp is the second strongest, but I think that's what it is. Hemp is also very closely related to jute, which you may be familiar with if your Birkenstocks ever came apart. There is a jute layer underneath that, and jute is a very, very strong material, not as strong as hemp, but it's not something that you look at and think, I want to wear that. And that's because jute is very rough and coarse. But what makes hemp and jute so strong is that since it's a bast fiber, it comes from the stalk of the plant as opposed to the seed. And the seed only does little wispy hairs on top that don't ever get too, too long. So they can't be as strong because as we know, the longer the fiber being spun, the stronger it is. And with that, a lot of the times comes an added thickness, which is where you lose some comfort. Just some guidelines to set. Typically, clothes and fabrics and fibers start to get irritating when they are over 20 microns thick. Some people say 24 microns, some people say 30 microns, but 20 is kind of that area where all of a sudden your wool sweater, if it's 24 microns, is a little itchy and it's poking into you. Cotton typically ranges from 9 to 22 microns. Linen is typically 10 to 25 microns. Wool goes from 10 to 35 microns. And then you have hemp. Wool is considered the the classic itchy material 10 to 35 microns hemp is 10 to 50 microns so it trends higher on average is it just super unbearable to wear this no is it really even super uncomfortable no do you get used to it like two seconds after you put it on yes but the first time you put it on you may be thinking this is not as comfortable as that other shirt i wore somewhere else so i'll get that other shirt so then why is patagonia investing so heavily in hemp and the secret is in my backpack actually i brought it with me the secret is this this is an idaho potato i am not wearing 100 percent hemp today actually these jeans are an incredibly weird blend which i don't even know why patagonia used this blend but we shall break this down into three pieces. Number one, okay, hemp is not comfortable, but it's amazing for all of these other reasons. Why isn't it used more? Number two, why is Patagonia investing so heavily into it? Because don't forget, organic cotton wasn't a thing until Patagonia made it a thing, invested a ton of money in it, made the infrastructure for it, and then it blew up. So is hemp the same thing? Number three, there is a solution that can change the world in a big way, but it's not the solution that most people propose. At least I think. Number one, why is hemp not taking over the world? The answer is because it's hemp. It's an incredibly divisive plant. People either love it or they hate it. So what happens is people that love it say it's the next miracle thing. It destroys cotton. It's better than all this. It can power our cars. We can make planes out of it. And then the other side says, no, you just want hemp for a different reason. So then it kind of goes kaput. And since it's so divisive, you basically, you can't get in the middle. Hemp has to destroy everything for those people to be right. And it has to be useless for those people to be right. So both angles push it towards the extreme, when in reality, hemp is kind of right here. Cotton is cheaper, it's softer, people like to wear it more. Then you have jute that handles kind of the industrial rope end that is almost as strong. Hemp plastic is not as structurally sound as regular plastic. Hempcrete is not as strong as concrete. There's a whole mess, when in reality, hemp is great and amazing and the best of the best for some things, but not everything. So, why is Patagonia using hemp at all? What is it good for? Blends, baby, blends. Hemp is good for everything, but not if you take everything else away, but if you add in hemp and you mix it into the pot, everything changes. If you have hemp on this shirt, this shirt is more durable, it's more abrasion resistant. If you add hemp to plastic, it's not 100% hemp plastic, it's 25% hemp plastic, but you reduce the plastic usage by 25%. Then if you look at base layers, for example, merino is great because it keeps your temperature regulated really well, but you need to add nylon or polyester so it doesn't rip and get destroyed, it stays better for a longer amount of time. You can replace those synthetic fibers with hemp. You can also add hemp to socks, so your socks will last way, way longer. By using hemp in different ways, we can reduce a lot of things, all while growing things that are more sustainable and all of that, and then hemp becomes 
Very, very powerful. Well, oh, sorry, I forgot the most important part of this video. Patagonia is in the stage where they're just trying to build infrastructure and get farmers growing hemp in the US, getting machines to process this hemp. And also when we first started processing cotton way, way, way back when, it wasn't the same cotton that we know now. We didn't have different staple lengths and genetically engineered cotton plants that were super long and soft and thin. So over time, what we should see is a refinement in hemp where it does get softer, possibly, it does get cheaper, it's way easier to process, and it's used in a lot more things. So boom, it's already way better. Patagonia is the beast that is going to make all of the processing, growing, XYZ, way, way easier. And it could, theoretically, become the fabric of the future. There's a lot of factors that go into play, but that is why Patagonia is investing so heavily in it, because, and obviously, they think there's going to be a big return in somehow, some way. So, that's why. Anyway, so, I have to go now. Goodbye. Enjoy the rest of the video. In closing, hemp is a lot like food, specifically the potato. Many people think a potato is the healthiest food in the world, and it just may be, but this weird thing happens that if you eat only potatoes and nothing else, you die. So you need to eat other things that also are very good for you. I'm aware that a potato was the worst example that I could have picked, because you almost, as a human, can survive exclusively on potatoes if you also drink milk, but I just thought it'd be fun to take my potato on one last walk outside before I cooked it for dinner.